This is Q on CBC Radio 1 across Canada, Sirius 137 across North America, and on bold television. Well, you may well know my next guest as a successful film director and producer, or you may know him as Elton John's partner. Toronto-born David Furnish entered a civil partnership with his longtime partner, the music legend Elton John, in 2005. In recent years, the power couple has been behind some of Broadway's most successful musicals, including most recently Billy Elliot. Now the pair have joined the producing team of Next Fall, a non-musical drama about a gay couple and and what happens when one of them is gravely injured and they're left without legal recognition of their relationship. That play debuted last June off-Broadway and enjoyed a sold-out run and huge critical acclaim. That's when David Furnish and Elton John first saw it and decided to help bring the production to an even bigger audience. Now, next fall, is getting ready to open on Broadway this spring. But first, producer David Furnish joins me live in Studio Q. Hello, sir. Good morning. You're as immaculately dressed as everybody's always said you would be. <laughs> Even this early in the morning. Even this early in the morning. You have to make the that, effort. Not that early in the morning. Well, it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about this play next fall that made you and, and Elton John want to get involved as producers? Uh, I, it, it really touched an emotional chord. It's a beautifully written play, uh, and it speaks so eloquently and so humanely about uh, one of the most important issues of our time, which is recognizing uh, same-sex relationships. Uh, particularly in a country which ironically although it was um, created to separate church and state and allow freedom of speech and freedom of expression uh, seems to be becoming increasingly complicated on this issue the country uh, being America right uh, Canada I, I'm very proud to say is much more progressive Britain as well um, but really at the core of this story is a couple that have been together for five years two men and uh, one of them is involved in a critical car accident and his family turn up from the deep south. They're deeply religious. They have no idea their son is gay and they have no idea he is in this relationship. And um, subsequently his partner of five years is not granted any visitation rights in the hospital, mm. um, which really kind of strikes to the core of uh, a long standing same sex love, uh, loving relationship. You'll forgive me for sounding too obvious, but did you personally connect to this story? Yeah, very much so because up until four years ago, um, our relationship within Britain had no legal status and no legal recognition. And you have to think about the possibility that the person that you're sharing your life with and you're, you're, you're dependent on each other emotionally uh, and you try to support each other as much as you can, that you could one day find yourself in a situation where your partner could be gravely ill or there could be decisions being made related to their death or their well-being and you wouldn't be allowed to be involved in those Were decisions. these things that you and Elton actually talked about? Yes. Yeah, we, t we, we, you know, you talk about it a lot. You, you, as you build a life together, Elton and I have been together 16 years, mm -hmm. which is a long time, and we love each other very much, and we take our relationship very seriously. Um, yeah, it is the sort of stuff you, you eventually you have to think about. Gay marriage or civil union uh, is, is still a very controversial, top, uh, t controversial topic, as you say, in the United States. Uh, how political is the intent of this play in that context? Um, we really attempt with this play to go in on a human level, to go in from the compassionate side of things, from the perspective of... Uh, who you choose to love is a very personal thing. It's not a play which is about beating uh, drums and waving placards. Uh, mm -hmm. It actually strips away the sort of superficial religious beliefs and conflicts and dogma and tries to get right down to the heart of the humane connection that these two men obviously have together. Mm -hmm. And their families do come to realize that in the course of the play and the but, drama but, that but, unfolds. But, but having said that, the, it's about humanity, et cetera. When you and Elton John decided to throw your, your names and your money behind the show, was it in part because you're hoping to change people's minds about the importance of legal unions for gays and lesbians? Yeah, I think we would hope to enlighten people. I think we would hope to make them think very seriously about the human side. Um, a lot of these issues relating to same-sex marriage in America, they leave out the fact that it's actually two people who have genuinely chosen to love each other. Well, in love, I don't even think you choose someone to love. You find the person that you love, mm. um, but you genuinely choose to share your lives together, to spend time together, um, to support each other, to build a life together, and create a foundation together. And I believe personally that it's important that society should provide some recognition for that in the same way that they allow recognition for same uh, different sex couples do you think in the same a, circumstances. Do you think a play has the capacity or the ability to change people's minds? Yeah, I think it does. I think the theater is an incredibly powerful thing. It's a very personal medium. Uh, I think a story that's compassionately told, sensitively told, intelligently told, uh, and emotionally persuasive 
really what we're trying to do with next fall is persuade people on an emotional level mm -hmm. more than anything else it's not about lining up human rights arguments or or uh, lists of of what uh, same-sex couples don't have versus uh straight couples it's very much about the human journey that this couple go on and how their families have to respond to that relationship and that real love. I want to come back to the, the play, uh, if I can just sidebar for a little bit. I mentioned that you and Elton are in a civil partnership. Besides the romantic significance, why was it important for you to enter into a legal civil union? Um, we did it for two reasons. We did it on the day it was legal because we felt it was groundbreaking human rights legislation. And Britain is one of the countries that tends to lead the world in those circumstances. And on the 21st of December, um, when it became legal, given the status that we have with our celebrity, we thought we could really shine a light on the fact that this legislation had come into place and hopefully that could change and affect uh, other people. On, a, on an emotional level, we, we, it wasn't until just after the fact that we came to realize how content we felt and how much more we felt um, happy and secure in our relationship because l society legally had chose to validate who we were as mm. a couple and to give us most of the same rights and status that they give to other couples. Most of the same rights. I mean, does your civil partnership afford you the, uh, the rights that a marriage would or there are still rights you don't have that a heterosexual married couple has? It's not, it's not completely equal. Um, yeah, f certainly from a taxation basis, it's not, it's not the same as, uh, as it is, but in terms of uh, really important issues like visiting a loved one when they're in the hospital, uh, death duties and taxes. Uh, I know one very prominent gay couple who uh, the older partner died. They lived in the same house together for 25 years. They'd built a life together. When the older partner died, there were death duties and taxes that had to be paid. The partner had to move out of his house of 25 years because wow. there was no money left to pay for those death duties. That's wrong. Mm. That, that doesn't happen to other couples who are, who are legally married, mm -hmm. and, and we protect people in those circumstances. So we should be doing the same thing for same-sex couples as well. David, the characters in this play, Luke and Adam, first meet at a dinner party. Now, I don't want to get to ridiculous comparisons <laughs> here. Have you been asked about this yet? The comparison? Because, I mean, uh, I understand that you and Elton famously first met at a dinner party. We did. Uh, albeit under totally different circumstances. What do you recall about that first night? Um, I, Besides your reticence to go to this party. Yeah, no, I didn't want to go. I thought Elton would be boring and, and self-centered. Um, I, I, it was a magical moment. It's one of those situations where you make a decision to do something in your life and you don't realize the significance of it at the time. You walk through the doorway of someone's house. Um, you're not quite sure what to expect. And suddenly you find yourself completely captivated by the humanity um, and the charm of this person. And in an instant, your life can change. And that's what happened to me. It's a really romantic story because then you get together the next night, right? We did. So for like, Chinese takeaway. And and what was the, do you remember the moment where you, I mean, you knew who he was, obviously. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Elton John. I, and I had been a big but, fan in the 70s. Um, and then in the 80s, I hadn't really paid that much attention. I'd sort of checked out right. as a fan. I wasn't listening to much more of his recent music. I didn't really know very much about what he'd been up to lately. I wasn't even aware that he'd become sober. Uh, I wasn't really following the Elton John life story that closely at all. Um, I listened to his music a lot in the in the early 70s, and then I'd sort of drifted away. Um, and I'd heard a lot of probably apocryphal stories about, you know, Elton, the big rock star, living in the big house in Windsor and having crazy parties and holding right, court and right. acting like what you would expect a big rock star to act like. And instead, you get greeted by at the door by a man who's incredibly charming, very self-effacing, doesn't take himself seriously, hangs up all of our coats, brings us our drinks, uh, we had, uh, I think it was spaghetti with meat sauce, spaghetti bolognese. Um, so when did he go from uh, he's Elton John to this is a guy that I I, I love? It was during the it was during the course of the evening. It was when we the first night. Yeah, because as we got a chance to talk about a lot of the things that we were interested in in life, and he was very interested in um, who I was, my job, my family, uh, growing up in Canada. Uh, it, it was not the Elton John hour, which is what I expected. <laughs> it was very much. He was a gracious host and and a, and a real humanitarian, which he is. And he was uh, as interested, if uh, actually much more interested in my life than I was in his. Mm. Um, and in fact, in those situations, you almost tend to sort of not ask the famous person anything because you're scared you're going to sort of come on too strong or be right. too keen or, <laughs> right, or whatever right, kind right. of thing. So um, it was a really genuinely charming exchange of interests in life and 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 love and. And, and passions. You move in with Elton John three months later, and you two have since become, I mean, arguably the most famous gay couple in the world. Did you so ever, we're told. Well, I mean... <laughs> yeah, no, I, would, I know, wouldn't disagree with you. Did you ever feel hesitant about being as public as you've been 
as a gay couple? Um, no, because the relationship it's felt, uh, itself felt so right and so correct and so integral. Um, I always say we're we're fine. It's the stuff that swirls around you that sometimes makes you crazy. But as long as if at the heart of that hurricane, the eye of that hurricane, the relationship itself is integral and true, and 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 honest, and based on real feelings and real love and real compatibility, you can deal with just about anything else as long as you talk about it and you bring your feelings to the open. Right. But you know there's going to be paparazzi and there's people mm -hmm. following you around, et cetera. And, and and you guys take the extra step of of not being afraid to actually put yourself out there regularly rather than hiding from all that. Well, we just, we've, we've, we've tried to live our lives by example. Um, it's not dissimilar to the approach taken in the play on Broadway. You know, we've never believed in, you know, marching streets and waving placards and banners. Elton has this enormous, huge celebrity and this incredible recognition through his music around the world. And we just felt as a couple, the best way to make people feel more comfortable and accept the notion of, of two men being together and sharing their lives is to just be ourselves mm -hmm. and be straightforward, um, which we always did. I, I know of different situations with famous celebrity gay couples where you know one partner rides in a different car, uh, might come in through a different door, uh, might sit in a different part of the aircraft on a flight. Uh, I couldn't live my life like that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be that dishonest and neither could Elton. And, and, uh, people accepted us and, and opened the doors to us and were, were very um, welcoming and, and forthcoming. And, and uh, it's been a gentle um, but positive uh, development and it continues to grow and change over the, the, the uh, and will continue to change over the coming years. But the, you know, the world is still a very confused, very frightening place. So if you look what's happening in Uganda, um, where they're talking about executing people for their sexuality. Mm. Uh, there's still so much misinformation, uh, so much confusion, so much hatred out in the world. You know, we just have to continue to be who we are but and, a, and, and lead with ourselves. A gentle and positive development, as you call it, but also such an interesting journey for you. Here we are in Toronto. Uh, you know, this is, this is your hometown. I mean, mm -hmm. this is where you grew up. And, I, and if, if we go back a bit, you've said that over the years, uh, you've gone from being completely in the closet mm -hmm. to the other extreme. You grew up in a middle-class uh, family. Coming out like an exit at missile, yes. <laughs> <laughs> grew up in Scarborough, Ontario, a middle-class family, uh, the son of an accountant and a homemaker. During a time when being gay was was not as accepted as it is today. It wasn't that long ago. What was life like for you back in the, the 80s? It was excruciating. Um, I was full of shame. I was full of self-loathing. Um, I remember going to clubs or bars in Toronto, sort of dipping my toe in the water and standing with my back to the street uh, in living in fear that somebody would come by and see me or recognize me and label me and consequently judge me. Uh, treat me in a less than favorable manner, uh, be prejudiced against me. Um, it was also at the time when I was grappling and coming to terms with my sexuality, it was the emergence of, of HIV AIDS, mm. um, which people were running around calling a gay plague um, and saying it was, it was God's justification uh, for an aberrant lifestyle, which is complete rubbish. Um, it was on the covers of magazines. Uh, it was a very confusing, very frightening time for me. And ultimately, I had to leave Canada and leave my family um, to really, truly come to terms with, with who I was without the burden of expectation that I felt placed upon me by, by my background and by my upbringing. When you move to London, when you start living with Elton John, that's not something you can keep secret for very long. <laughs> how, how, did, uh, how did you tell your parents? Um, I, well, I had to come home I, uh, because I wanted them. After we'd been together for about three months, um, there was a level of inevitability that it would come out in the press, but in particularly in the British press, who have a reputation for being very ferocious and very insensitive. And I loved my parents very much, uh, my brothers and my, and my family. Uh, I wanted them to hear it from me, so I had to come home at Christmas. And um, it was Boxing Day. And mm -hmm. I plucked up the courage, and I sat down with them and, and wanted them to know that I was sharing my life with someone that I loved very much mm -hmm. and that I felt like I had found a love like the love that they had and that that was all I ever wanted in life was to have the same sense mm -hmm. of, of love and security um, and joy uh, from a relationship that I had experienced growing up watching them as a couple. And uh, I ended up bawling my eyes out, and mm -hmm. uh, they just sat on the sofa and smiled um, mm -hmm. because I think they'd had their suspicions but it wasn't an issue that they w felt comfortable raising because the sort of my issue to raise rather than theirs. 
And um, my mother and father looked at me with big smiles on their faces and said, this is really wonderful. We can be a family again because they wow. felt the gulf. Oh. They felt yeah. the fact that I had put an ocean between us. Um, and it was a huge sense of relief for everybody. I think yeah. the fact that it was Elton was, you know, a little bit of cream it on top of it. That was a crazy shock. <laughs> Mom, Mom and Dad, it's Boxing Day. I have something to tell you. Oh, is there a sale at Future Shop, honey? <laughs> no, something else. I... Uh... <laughs> I think it came as a huge shock. Um, they knew we'd be, they, they knew we'd met, and they knew we'd become friends. I never, I never lied to my family mm. about my life and my, who my friends were and what I was doing. Um, but I, I don't think they expected that in a million years. What about you? Where does where do you fit into? I mean, the you 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 you've acknowledged that in dating someone as well known as Elton John, you had to make certain sacrifices and compromises. How did you make sure you didn't, or that you don't, lose yourself? your identity being with someone who appears to be such a larger than life person um you hang on to your identity and you hang on to the things that define you as yourself how um, do you do that well I, I, I kept working and continue working and my own career and my own projects to this day uh, I had a very successful career in advertising when I met Elton I was on the board of directors of Ogilvy and Mather in, in London and ran a, a large chunk of business for the agency um, it's v it could be very tempting in a situation like that to say well I, economically now everything's fine I'm just gonna jack my career in and come on the road and follow him around um, I think if I had done that it would have been an enormous mistake um, it's very important. I think we all define ourselves in life by what we do and our achievements and what we establish for ourselves in life um, through our work. Uh, and I continue to work, and to this day I continue to work um, harder, harder than ever, which means we can't be together 24-7. Uh, he has a global career. He's on the road. He tours all the time. Um, but he's very respectful of the need for me to continue to work and develop my own career. Um, as I am with him continuing to work and develop his career. And actually, it's really nice because when you get together, um, you have so much more to talk about. Uh, You're a celebrity in your own right now. How do you feel about that not uh, notoriety? Yeah, I, 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 sort of, I sort of think I'm a celebrity byproduct um, rather than... I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm not at the position... Don't seem like a byproduct. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't, I'm, not, I'm not in the situation where... I can't still go around the corner and get a cup of coffee at a Starbucks or oh, I see, I've get heard you say that, but your life now consists of luxurious homes around the world, an extended family of famous actors and musicians, Madonna drops by for tea, you're the godfather of David and Victoria Beckham's uh, two eldest sons. It, it, can it get a bit surreal? Um, yeah, I, I always have what I call pinch me moments um, where you just, you can't sort of believe what you're doing. But, you know, we do live in a society that venerates and puts celebrities up on such a pedestal when in fact, you know, they're just everyday people. And all of those people happen to be our friends and I connect with them on a human level, not mm. on a celebrity level. Um, and when we go out for dinner or we meet for tea, um, we'd probably talk about the same things that you and I would talk about if uh, we were to go out and have a cup of coffee one afternoon. Um, you can't allow yourself to think or put someone in a different position in a friendship or in a relationship just because of their celebrity. It, it, it unevens the playing field. Um, and I think it makes it impossible for it to maintain any sort of level of healthiness. Most celebrities, by the way, and I've met a lot of very big celebrities, they don't expect it and they actually don't like it. The biggest mistake when you meet someone famous is like when you can run up and go, oh my God, I've loved you for 20 years and I have all of your albums and your music like changed my life and I played it at my graduation and I played it at my wedding. It makes them feel uncomfortable because it creates this gulf and it yeah. puts them up yeah. in this higher position. If you just try and connect with people on a human level and talk about everyday stuff and funny stuff, uh, what was on the news last night or a movie that you've seen, um, you can get things much more down to a basic level much more quickly. It's good to finally meet you. Nice to meet you too. David Furnish is the producer of the Broadway play called Next Fall. He's been with me here live in Studio Q.